Greetings, I'm your humble game master, and I am an archaeologist. Recently, I've been delving into the strange, murky, and ancient past of the role-playing hobby, specifically that of the classical period known as Old School, and I've been sharing my thoughts and experiences about the Old School Renaissance. Thus far, my experience has been with retro clones of older games, specifically based on an individual's interpretation or focus on a particular aspect of said game, and as such, I'm yet to delve into the real deal, an actual Dungeons and Dragons game from the period in question. Then recently, I uncovered this mysterious tome, the Dungeons and Dragons Rules Cyclopedia. Now, whilst it's not quite from the very ancient days of the hobby, this book was a compilation of several books from an earlier rule set from the late 70s and early 80s. A collection of books known to aficionados as Beckme, standing for Basic, Expert, Companion, Master, and Immortal. In effect, the Rule Cyclopedia was the Dungeons and Dragons Bible, though probably not called that for satanic panic reasons. So rather than blaspheme and call this the D&D Bible, they compiled these earlier books and around 1991 published the Rule Cyclopedia. Now, I know what you're thinking, what's a cyclopedia? And is that different from an encyclopedia? Well, to quote the book, The D&D Cyclopedia is as accurate a name as you could want for this book. A cyclopedia is an encyclopedia, and this book is an encyclopedia of all major D&D game rules. Maybe Encyclopedia just didn't sound mysterious or cool enough. Now, I did not uncover an original of this ancient manuscript, however I did procure a replica from DriveThruRPG, as Wizards of the Coast have recently re-released the book. I picked up a copy, although initially the fine people at DriveThru sent me a copy of Unearthed Arcana instead, a book I have no idea about, but it seems to be a large collection of house rules. They were kind enough to let me keep this book, and sent me a copy of the Rule Cyclopedia as well. The print-on-demand copy was okay, though the text is a little bit blurred in places, looks a bit blue, and uh, seems to smudge a little if I'm indelicate with my fat fingers. So on to the tome itself. This is a nice book. Straight off, that front cover just strikes the imagination. It's a painting by Jeff Easley that depicts a knight on horseback being chased by a dragon. The colours are great, the action is there, and it kind of tells a story. The interior art is okay with this black and white or blue and white line drawings. It's serviceable perhaps, but a little cartoony. The front cover really steals the show. Uh, what strikes me from the art and the sparseness of it is this is a textbook first and foremost. And maybe we've been a little bit spoilt by the glossy full colour books that we get today. I was also a little bit dismissive perhaps of this being an encyclopedia. However, this is true. In these 300 pages, this book has everything. From classes, equipment, rules, monsters, dungeon master tips, other planes of existence, how to build a kingdom, how to become a godlike immortal, and even a short gazetteer of Mistara, one of the earliest D&D settings. I would say that modern D&D needs three books to do just as much as this, but the Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and Monster Manual, uh, that holy trinity has existed since first edition. But the thing is, it all fits in this book, and nothing seems to be missing. At least as a casual read through. The main thing that strikes me, however, throughout this whole book is that although it was based on an earlier version of D&D from the early 80s, it features some innovations and ideas I didn't think entered the hobby until at least third edition. Ideas around building balanced encounters, gaining experience points for things other than killing and taking treasure, skills, um, and even a complicated looking combat mastery selection of options that looked like feats with their uh, special abilities to use different weapons. There are also guides for reskinning monsters or making up new abilities for them, designing campaigns with tone and with character goals in mind. There are rules for wilderness encounters, the city, social encounters, truly going beyond the dungeon. Things that old school gamers bitch and whine about in modern versions of their favourite game exist in this version and seemingly have done since before I was born. I'm intrigued, and I like a lot of this book, but there are a few issues. Firstly, the writing is far from elegant, and there's a lot of it, and with the slightly blurry print-on-demand print, it makes it a little bit difficult to read at times. It still has the old school problem of having multiple subsystems, with combat skill use, magic, thief skills and so on, or using their own subsystems completely unrelated to each other. This really takes the cake with an armed combat and wrestling, which takes up nearly four pages of tiny rules. 
There is also one of my pet peeves from some old school games, alignment languages. That's right, not alignment itself, of which in this version there are only three, law, neutrality and chaos, but the idea that if you're morally aligned to a philosophical and moral outlook, you also speak a language related to that alignment. If you are an ordered person, you can speak to other ordered people. If you are chaotic, you can speak the secret language of chaotic people. What's more, if you change your alignment, you forget your old language and start speaking a new alignment language. That means if you want to speak to goblins, if you kick enough puppies, you'll suddenly develop the ability to do so. But I do like this book, and I want to play this or even run it. It seems to capture something intangible that I just can't quite put my finger on, that lacks these, the old school machismo of other versions of D&D, but hasn't quite become the supposedly entitled version of itself later versions seem to be, at least according to the opinions of some. This seems to capture a transitional phase in D&D's development, and from here you can see the future paths open up which lead to newer versions of the game as we see it today. So do you agree or have I missed the mark? Am I getting closer to some answers in my quest for the old school experience? Or was the rules encyclopedia the beginning of the end for the one true way of playing d and I'd love to see your comments and until next time, have a great game.